All right, Pat. By the way, the uh, the the woo sounds of Ric Flair, who just signed a multi year contract <laughs> with AEW this week, the uh, the second biggest wrestling company. So Ric What's Flair, it? he's not going to actually wrestle, is he? I uh, oh, I don't know, man. He, he's got to be that. sixty, he, he, doesn't? He? He's got to oh, be. Oh, I think he's he's like seventy four, maybe yeah, going okay. on one hundred ten. He's had terrible health problems too, right? Didn't he's, he's almost cheated. died multiple times. Yeah, he's yeah. cheated death more than the average yeah. person. Yeah, so time. he's probably going to be on the broadcast going, ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. Hey, he want he has said he wants to die in a wrestling ring. So you know, maybe mm-hmm. they, maybe they can promote that. You know, hey, coming up on Saturday, Ric Flair Watch dies that. in a wrestling <laughs> ring. I might pay Flair. for that. I that would, would uh, that would draw a good audience. They they could use yeah. that. Yes, they could. So. Uh, Hey, Sunday, speaking of uh, big events, we've got Jaron Hall against Taylor Heineke. Falcons, three-and-a-half-point favorites right now, Pat. Really? Wow, they're, uh, that, that's incredible. Uh, the the uh, betters, are, the, the Vegas is still not big fans of the Vikings, are they? Last week, they were only one, one-and-a-half in Green Bay against that pathetic outfit. I suppose they're worried about the quarterback, but, uh, you know, you're not going down to – take on Dan Marino in his prime in Atlanta or anything. Uh, are you really at that much of advantage when Taylor Heineke's the quarterback for the other team? I don't know. Atlanta's, uh, Atlanta's uh, about as mediocre as you could get in that mighty NFC South, but I have no idea what we'll see from Jaron Hall, and neither do you, by the way. Nobody <laughs> does out don't, there. I'm, I'm talking to the okay. vast listening audience. Neither do you know what don't we're Don't forget, Roycey, though, Every time a kid like Jaron Hall starts, it's an opportunity to uh, to knock off what you once described as the worst start in Vikings history by a quarterback. December of 2006, Tavares Jackson's first start. Yes. You, you sat by me in the press box and declared that the worst start, I believe, by a Vikings quarterback. Yes, and uh, that probably gave Spurgeon Wynn too much credit, right? Yes. Didn't Spurgeon start... After, before that, right? Before that, oh, yeah. it was before early two thousands. Yeah. That's why it was yeah. so impressive. Well, I can guarantee you this, though. Tarveris is about two and a half years younger than uh, than uh, Jaron Hall when he started that game. You know, he was probably twenty three, right? <laughs> I would guess. I think so. Yeah. When he started that game, our guy's twenty five and a half. I keep bringing that up. He's a wily veteran. Even Apparently, he he's he's yet. older than like twenty five or thirty other players on the roster. Maybe I think it's like <laughs> yeah. thirty one players or something. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it is uh, you know, as I said, he's even older than ten or more. Morgan, for goodness sakes, who played nine <laughs> years of college football. So uh, uh, I don't know. I, I, I have, I, if I was a betting man, and I'm not anymore, I don't think I'd wager on this game. I, I think I'd pass when I was looking at games. Uh, last week, I would have been all over Green Bay, house mortgage on that one. But, uh, I mean, I would have been all over the Vikings to win at Green Bay when they had cousins but uh this one i i think i'll pass i don't have any idea. i'll give you a little teaser we do a we do a saturday show on purple daily that we call purple picks where we, we make our picks for the game we go over some of the what the what the betting trends are and uh, this one kind of stands out here that quarterbacks making their first career start are 38 and 70 straight up in the last decade since 2000 uh, since 2021 so just the last three years Quarterbacks making their first career start playing on the road are three and fifteen straight. Wow. Up. Okay. So only there's only been uh, not many of them have started on the road. Then uh, not not many. And uh, I, I suppose when you're you know when you're making your choice to switch quarterbacks, you usually try to do it at home. But uh, I don't. Didn't know. Teddy Bridgewater uh, come in in Atlanta? He was in New Orleans. New Orleans. Saints. Okay. New Orleans. Castle was that his first hurt. start? Mm-hmm. What no, happened the, to him? That was the first game. Teddy? What happened to him? He's in Detroit, right? I know, but he's terrible. He's going be, to uh, beat the Vikings in week 18. His, his leg almost came unta- unattached. Yeah, I'm surprised he's was, still playing. That was four years ago, for goodness sakes. <laughs> that was like day? seven years ago, actually. It was, yeah, and, and it still almost came off his body. Remember that day? We were at the State Fair oh, that gosh. day, were we not? When we yeah. got that news, weren't we doing a Saturday show at the State Fair or something, Judd? I think I it was think? like a it was like a Thursday or Friday because no. we were we were on the I was on the bus yeah. coming back. Oh, it was yeah. a, it a was a Thursday. And, and the Bradford trade was on the Saturday then oh, that, that was we it, went yeah. to the fair. 
Yeah, yeah, but it was uh, Thursday, and we're, what are we going to talk about today? Oh, wait, uh, they had to amputate Teddy here at Bridgewater's leg, so we'll uh, do that. Yeah. So, that, is, that is probably the weirdest in- injury in Viking history, right? Because it, it, it still hasn't been, ex- it was just Well, I mean, bad- Taylor Heineke once kicked his leg through a glass window because he locked himself out of his house. Oh, Non-contact, yeah. though. A non-contact to almost have to end an amputation is still one of the most inexplicable things yes. I've ever heard of. He has to have his life saved on the practice field from from not from non-contact. It's uh, it's incredible. He was all. By the way, all you Teddy lovers, he was overrated back then too, right? So uh, he was. You know, now he's unplayable, but back then he was overrated. I I, I got in a lot of trouble for. Not being on the tip because he was such a nice kid, you know. And he was a good kid. He still is a good kid. Time. But he's, um, you know, the, he got a chance to play last year, right? When Tua was hurt and was terrible, mm-hmm. right? So, that, yeah, played against the Vikings, got hurt. Mm-hmm. Pat, do you he think uh, do you think Kirk Cousins plays another game as a Viking? No, I think they're going to use this as their opportunity to get out of salary cap difficulties and start adding to the, you know, not have to. Not have to, uh, you know, sit around and do nothing during the free agency period. I think they're going to use this to uh, do something. I I don't know where they're going to go for, for the quarterback, but they're not going to go for the high-priced one, I don't think. I think this is a way to get out from and get into that three-, four-year period where you don't have the high-priced quarterback. Back to the days of Denny when we brought in somebody uh, each year until Cal Pepper came along. That was fun, yeah. man. That was, never that was veterans, was though. That yeah. was just a rotating door but, of veterans. But not guys with long-term deals, no. you know, that you had to, to pay all this money. But I, I don't think he will. No, I don't. I I wonder what he's going to have to uh, – he's going to be a free agent in February who's going to have to have one of those tryouts to try to show everybody that he's in good shape and can move, right? He's going to have to. Uh, but the tryout probably can't. I mean, if there is a workout, I don't know yeah. the teams would. His, he I don't might think he's going to be in position too, Pat. He's, not till uh, June or July. Yeah, yeah. He he's going. He's probably not going to be well enough to actually go through a football workout till, like Phil said, July. So what are you going to do? Take his uh, or take his word for it that he's going to be okay? I don't. Uh, I don't. He's. Be, you'll have to wait and see how Aaron Rodgers is doing next spring, and then maybe say, yeah. Well, yeah. okay, is it the same injury? I mean, is it? We. we mm-hmm. I mean, it's a, it's a torn Achilles, but is it? Uh, I wonder if uh, if there's a severity of a tear. I guess well, it's, it's a tear. It's a tear. I don't know what. Do you what think we'll it. see Kirk spinning the ball before the game, like Rod- Rodgers, one month after surgery, just to mm-hmm. just to let everyone know, hey. I'm coming back this season, guys. Well, Just for Kirk, some is, uh, Kirk is going to help uh, guide. Is he going to be on the sideline helping guide the young man here? That They've was been the... texting and talking all week, according to some of the beat writers. Oh, yeah, he's still he has been. Isn't that he, special? He's still uh, going to be around around <laughs> the team. Got, I, that, that's what we need. We got nine quarterback coaches now, including the head coach. Let's get another one. Okay. I don't think he can be on the si- sideline for quite some time, though, because they're always concerned about guys who who yes. are like in in casts and on those uh, have mm-hmm. their leg propped up. If they get taken out in the sideline, yeah. Didn't Mike Tice get taken out one time, or was or Sean yep. Payton? No, Tice did. Tice he got no, taken out. Tice tore his ACL again. against the Giants. Didn't Chili got it once too? Didn't Chili get? I thought Chili got it once too. I yeah, thought I so. you know. That's right. So uh, yeah, it's it's dangerous over there. These are big, fast men trying to take cheap shots on the sidelines. Yeah. Look out! <laughs> Look out! Yeah, I don't. You know, my knowledge of what who Atlanta has on their team is almost nil. So I could not. <laughs> uh, I, I who who are their receivers? Uh, well, so they've got they've got a re- they've got a really good group of skill position players that have been drafted in the last two or three years. Drake London was a top what fifteen pick oh, from USC right, wide yeah. receiver. And then Bijan Robinson, the running back from Texas, uh, who's been now is he? What's his health status? I have not looked at the injury report the last couple of days, but he's they been one of the stars. Yeah. Yeah. They have one of the most unusual coaches in history, though. Arthur, Arthur Smith, Smith is he's the son of extreme wealth. You know that, right? Yes. He's, he's, yes. I mean, is the, the father like owns half of New York City or something, and. Uh, and he's a, uh, you know, he's just this 
this rich kid who decided he wanted to be a football coach. He's uh, a condescending ass. Have have you heard it, him, Arthur no. Smith? No. Oh my God. So he screwed up. So so the the Bijan injury, or I think he was sick. He was supposed to put him on the in injury report on Sunday because if a guy is sick or something and you think he's not going to play, I think he took one snap. Anyway, long story short. Arthur Smith is grilled about it and starts to basically say how the media has no idea what they're talking about, how he did this right, how it's like, you're a complete jackass. <laughs> you screwed up. Just say, I screwed up. Sorry. Yeah. 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 It's uh, but it, it's a, it's an interesting story. What was he? The offensive coordinator in Tennessee or someplace, yeah. right? Which that wasn't Tannenbaum's big year. Yeah. Tannehill. Yeah. But Tannehill. Also. Tann uh, Tannehill. Sorry. But. That was never a, you know, that was never a that creative with an offense because they gave the ball to the running back about right sixty percent of the time. So I I don't know. It's you know what the NFL really has done for cost saving all through the years is they pick out these seven every year they pick out these seven assistant coaches on teams that were successful and they hire them as coaches now. They don't go you know. Denver screwed up. They went out and paid Peyton, whatever the hell they're paying him, ninety million or whatever it is. Two, but, two in a row. They've won two but, in a row, though. But uh, recycling, uh, recycle. They, they they don't recycle high price coaches. They they create their own. They've created their own low pay uh, market for uh, for uh, new coaches, and, and they they do that better than other leagues do. Uh, as a money, another money saving thing is just picking out what assistant coaches we're going to uh, keep. It's the uh, opposite of hockey. If football was like hockey, we'd still yeah. see guys like John, John Fox would be like on his yeah, 15th. Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing. You know who, you know how you know that time is going by fast when you see young, Fresh face Stevin, Kevin Stefanski at Cleveland. He's this grizzled old guy. Yeah, he looks, looks like, like he's, he's 60 years old looks now. Looks like he's been through hell. You know, he's, he's over there. The Is he the line. longest tenured Browns coach in history now? I mean, he's been around for like two and a half years. So This this version of the Browns, yes. That's, it it's probably is. They, Since they, 2000 they or 99, whenever they came back. They yeah. haven't kept him any. He, an okay, I was, I was joking. Uh... He is. So Romeo Cronell made it. Okay, Romeo Cronell made it four years between 2005 wow. and 2008. Before that, uh, the, the only coach, this goes back to the previous Browns, the last coach to be there longer than Stefanski is Bill Belichick in the early really? 1990s. Yeah, and uh, was a... Was it, he was a great failure who was never going to get another job because he was such a miserable lout, and now he's uh, been uh, what twenty some years now in New England, right? Did Did you guys see see the report that there is uh, speculation that the Washington Commanders are going to attempt to trade for Belichick with the Patriots after the season? Yes. He, well, how old is he now? Late sixties, seventy. Let's Let's see here. Is he around seventy? He's got to be around seventy. Yeah, but yeah, he's uh, he's seventy one. He'll be seventy two before the draft. So Washington, is it, so they got a wacky. Do they? I mean, they had the the miserable Daniel Snyder. Do they have a wacky new owner yet? Some guy with it's the guy money. that owns the Sixers and Devils. It's the same oh, guy. Really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So he's uh, he thinks he's an expert on this stuff. So he's gonna okay. <laughs> It's funny, like it's kind of random that you you own three different sports franchises in the four in the four majors. It's like different, Kroenke, right? Different cities. Oh, the jackass in Stan L.A. Cronky, who wouldn't let anybody go in the bathroom when he was at uh, TSF Bank Stadium, uh, is got he's got the cup, he's got the and uh, NBA title, and he's got yep. the Super Bowl championship trophy. You know, all well bought. That's so. That's it's, that's. Walmart money, right? Yeah, he's he's a Walmart. He's Walmart. Um, His mm -hmm. wife is, I believe. Right? Yes, yeah. isn't he marry a Walton? Mm -hmm. That's a good good idea to marry Walton. You know, that's a you know you gotta you gotta be sure your politics are in the right order. But I don't think Crocky is. Uh, but if you're on the fence, you could probably be swayed. You know. Oh yes, yes, yes. That's right for that for that kind of dough. So. Uh, Tell me, Judd, you were at the hockey game. What's wrong with our team here? Uh, you know what? I I've decided they're paying tribute to 
Fletcher and Yo. They've decided mm-hmm. to have a throwback. This looks like the same team. They are lifeless. They come out and Dean, Dean lit into him last night. It was fantastic. He he went Mike Yo talked about the so poor Gorgie. So Kevin Gorg Bally's right. He okay. gets to start the press conference and he start and you know he starts with God bless him. I love Kevin. He starts with hey you know. First period was rough, but I mean, then then you you know you got engaged, you started to play better. Dean looks at him and says, "But the game starts at seven p.m. Yeah, not seven fifteen, not seven twenty, not uh-huh. seven thirty. The game, you you know, when the coach is so pissed off that the Bally's person can't even get their positivity in that you got something wrong Great with trouble. you." You know what I've noticed about Dean? No, this 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 thing that I can't stand has become pervasive in all sports. The team is now our group. We're now our group. Even with crusty old Dean, it's our group didn't play good last night. You're not a group, you're a team. Falvey, all you jackasses that take group, 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 group. The hell with group. You know, you're a team. That group. He had, I saw those group quotes all over. We're, our group didn't play good. Oh, God. What are the different – There's. I feel like there's different ways you feel about your team depending on the word you use. Like if you use the word collection, it means that they're yeah. horse bleep, right? <laughs> this this if, collection. If, you, if your group, it kind of mean, oh, or, you know, this started corporate because all of a sudden you had the gold claim group. But everybody, you know, the, the companies became – group and now it's into sports and it's uh it just just agitates me because uh oh by the way i heard somebody on the rival station and i no longer rival fm station they no, we've, we've won the war show now. Yeah. <laughs> i should doing the doing the viking show a young lady and somebody else i don't know who some like afternoon late afternoon they preempt barrero to do this show and uh, yeah, she said that uh, that uh, that uh, our guy uh, Kevin is making an intentional dis- is, is is making intentional decisions about the uh, quarterback situation. So that's we get that too. The intentional. <laughs> that's another one that you got me. It's the intentional. That's we're gonna be crazy. Very, very intentional with we're our decision in, making. We're being intentional. We're being that intentional. That started with crazy. Yeah, Qua- yeah, crazy yeah, started did. that now one. It's, no, yes. it's uh, taking over the uh, whatever cheerleading show they have on. What uh, does that mean? Like if I say, right, hey, we're going to we're going to we got to come up with a new show idea here at Score North. And the four of us are going to be very intentional Fair with the way we go we about do that. it. We're going to do that. I, I have no idea what it means. But it means uh, you pass the buck a lot. You ask a lot of people. And when things <laughs> flame out, you blame their ass for it. <laughs> you know what, though? The NFL, they had this figured out unintentionally maybe intentionally years ago when they created coordinators i say the greatest genius in the history of sports 60 some years ago when he said you are my defensive <laughs> coordinator yes. that means if our defense stinks we're gonna fire you not me it's great so, so like the, the steelers won last night but the whole season steelers fans have been fed up with Matt Canada, the offensive yes. coordinator, fire Canada. So if Mike Tomlin can't coach offense, it ain't his fault. It's Matt Canada's fault. Yeah, right? it's his fault. Yes. And no, uh, what, what what were they, this big offensive machine before Matt Canada came to town? I, no. I, once Ben got to be 90, they weren't uh, very good. So uh, <laughs> I, I didn't see who won that game. I didn't watch it. Steelers. Either. Steelers won no that idea. game. I had no idea. Five and three. The Steelers were supposed to be, you know, uh, this might be the year they finished under 500. Now, uh, last week when you did your pick show, was I was the only one who was uh, probably 100% accurate on the uh, Vikings-Packers game, but you guys all picked the Vikings, right? I you picked did. the Packers. Uh, yeah, you picked oh, really? Wow. I picked the Packers. Mm-hmm. I'm now mm-hmm. two and six picking Vikings games so far this year. So, but you are the Fade only per- person who basically called the season-ending injury to the starting quarterback. Yes, that's true. I did. The, the I victory did. lap has been a week long now. Yes. Taking the victory lap. I told right. you about that. Very sin like. Yeah. Let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> I talked about that last week. Yeah, that's uh, that's true. So I have. Uh, so uh, hey, meanwhile, our go for a football team. Prime territory here for the West Division. Can they finally 
become the first collection of Gophers ever to beat a Bielema team. They're, uh, oh, they were man. 0-7 when he was at Wisconsin, and they're 0-2 since he was at Illinois, since he's been at Illinois, right? Yeah. And uh, he is he is definitely eating his frustrations. Have you seen him lately? My he, yeah, God. He does. He's, he's enjoying he's the catering and champagne. Yeah, yeah he's got to be. I, I don't know what he's uh, doing, but uh, they were terrible. And then they beat Maryland, and then Maryland turned out to be terrible. So did I saw some power ratings that got Rutgers like one of the top four teams in the league right now. They might like, be, yeah, they're feisty. I think once you get past the first three, the the obvious first three. It's and also of, the yeah. guy that uh, also the guy that uh, first outed Harbaugh in the Saints shine stealing too with that. Uh, yeah post game something funny is going on here Man, so some of the videos that are coming out now it's like the guy the guy in question there's all these videos now you'll see <laughs> there's lip readers he'll be standing next to like the michigan defensive coordinator saying run right it's a run right and then the michigan defensive coordinator will like crash the safeties down yeah. <laughs> what was the game he he was on the sideline was it a michigan state central central michigan he was on, game it's he was a on the central game. michigan sideline yeah. it's a night game and he's got glasses on He's got yeah, sunglasses he's on. Chippewa, he's wearing Chippewa colors there. <laughs> Chippewa. Right. So the implication is that like Michigan facilitated a deal with the Chippewas, I would assume, right? No. Because he's no, not just going to be standing I, there. I, How I would know, he be? He just he kind of wandered down there, and they probably don't have the great security, and he looked like a coach, <laughs> and uh, and but uh, t- but Harbaugh said again last week, I don't know anything about it. He's standing next to the guy on the side. What are they going to do? Are they going to? Pull the plug on Michigan, the best team. Oh, they, man. They, they apparently all the coaches. We had a story today. All the coaches were on a conference call with the commissioner, whoever the hell that is. I don't even know what it is anymore. On Wednesday, and now the all the ads or all the maybe university presidents are talking today or something. Yeah, are they going to pull the plug on them? It's well that the coaches feel like. Well, how are we supposed to go out there and play a team where we know that they have an oh. advantage on us? You know, and it's it's a fair point. How many teams are doing it though, and just ha- haven't been stupid enough to, to have some rogue kid that's clearly an idiot and got caught? Like that's my question. Well, he's, not, he's not a kid. He's a he's a military guy. That uh, I think he's a retired military, isn't he, or something? Yeah, he's I, a little. I, he's older than kid, he's, than kid age, but yeah. Okay, some rogue yeah, idiot who got yeah, caught. It's, it's it's incredible. It's uh, I mean, but Harbaugh. It's uh, Harbaugh will not be the coach there next year. That's that's official. No, you know, they they no. pulled the plug on their negotiations with him. So, hey, uh, Pat, we, could have any, already... we could have saved hey. Michigan all this heartbreak by hiring him here, right? We could have. Hey, if Harbaugh or anyone else needs a car, where should they oh, go yes. to find a good deal? Jim Paul, Jim Paul, Brett Paul Valley Group of GM Dealers, located in Apple Valley and uh, Hastings. Uh, they are moving them out the door right now. You can get 1.9% financing. You can get 0.9% financing on the uh, Sierra truck. A lot of truck owners these days. I I I, I looked this up. I didn't. Uh, I did. This is my own copy here. It sounds like a good deal. If I needed a new car, I'd go out there and get one at 1.9%. They're almost giving it away. So, uh, yeah. you know, they got great, great new SUVs out there that uh, look like they're the right size to take the kid to hockey practice. And uh, uh, good suburban parents should love going out there and uh, making a deal with these guys. As I say, I've bought my last five new cars from them, uh, from Jim Paul and uh, Brett Paul out at uh, Valley Group of GM Dealers. Right now, they're... Uh, the uh, prices on the vehicles themselves are about as low as they've been in a while, and also the interest rates are uh, available are great. So, uh, yeah, head out there this weekend uh, at, between football games and uh, take a look at the uh, at the product that we see. These are intentional decisions they're making yes, here. They are. Yeah, sell you a car. It's very it's collaborative, a collaborative effort. It's your group. Over there. It's, Brett, Royce's group. Well, it's a group too. That's right. It's a group. That's right. I forgot. I group is okay in car dealership. <laughs> it's not okay in athletics. So. Yep. Anyway, I, I recommend the fellas highly, you know, that uh, at, at Brett Paul and Jim Paul's Valley group of GM dealers, Apple Valley and Hastings. 
Awesome, Pat. All right. Well, enjoy your football weekend here, and uh, we will recap it all on Monday and Tuesday with you. I have the uh, I have the New Hope uh, Robbinsdale Civil War tonight at six o'clock. Right. Cooper yeah. versus Armstrong yeah. should be a good game. They I think they went overtime when they played during the regular season for the sectional title. And uh, then on Saturday, uh, Bethel and Concordia, and Steve Nelson, who turned the Bethel from a a uh, miserable collection of bottom feeders into a powerhouse uh, will uh, be as announced this week. He's uh, he's quitting after this year. So uh, they're going to try to get back to another MIC title game uh, this Saturday against Concordia. So awesome. All right. Where I am this week. There you go. Patrick Royce, Royce Unchained. Enjoy your football weekend, everybody. See, See ya. Yeah.